Hello there, Minus here. Today's video is about forestation and how it's done. You see, I had the privilege to participate in a forestation in my hometown. Let's see how it works. But before we do that, we have to distinguish the two main types of forestation. First is the reforestation, which is the establishment of forest growth on areas that there are no trees, but there were in the past. This method is mostly applied following natural disasters, like wildfires, or even after human activities as well, like extending agricultural land use, which resulted in a negative effect on the environment. For the latter reason, currently the largest reforestation project in history is underway. And as you have may guess it, it is located in Brazil's tropical forest. The plan is to restore 73 million trees in the Amazon forest by 2023. This multi-million dollar project started three years ago, led by the Conservation International Organization and spans across 70,000 acres of land, or 300 square kilometers. Although it is the largest project to talk about right now, it won't save the Amazon rainforest by itself, and that's why it is a part of a larger project which sees 12,000 square kilometers covered in trees once again by 2030. But how do they do it? The Amazon is the largest rainforest across the globe, home to more than 1,100 types of plants for every square kilometer. The variety is so vast that the 2016 survey listed 381 new species discovered in 2014 and 2015 alone. The importance of this project to succeed is really high, and for that matter, a huge tree diversity is planted for a large variety of resources used for a rich diversity of species. But why do they do it? This unique place on Earth is subject of continuous commercial exploitation of natural resources, minerals and agriculture. What we have done here today is called afforestation, the other type of forestation which is the establishment of trees to a place that there were no trees in the past. This was done in order to connect so many forests and increase animal species diversity. Involve local authorities from the beginning of forestation efforts. Reforestation efforts that impose technical solutions without the full involvement and adherence of local stakeholders have failed. That is why we chose a number of partners to get involved. Those were the municipalities' authorities who provided the trees and chose the most appropriate location in which the forestation took place. The experts of the local environmental organization was there as well to organize and assist the project, followed by a local school of 2,000 students who planted most of the trees. Plant selection the fastest growing trees, or those with the greatest economic value, are not necessarily the most appropriate for the local context. Not in our case, as we planted acacias and pinewoods among others. The selected tree species not only need to be adapted to the local environment, but also need to provide a sustainable food chain for native animals so that the ecosystem is balanced. Work with local authorities to enforce laws and improve safety. The forested area is property of the municipality, so the enforcement of restriction for other land uses other than that of a forest would be made without potential conflict. As species increase, danger of harmful insects increases as well. That's why we planted a number of different plants and trees so that the ecosystem is safer. A lesson learned the difficult way from the Great Green Wall of China. Since the 1950s, Chinese people suffered from the expansion of the Gobi Desert. Since then, water levels decreased from 12 to 19 meters, and the mean annual temperature has increased by 2 degrees Celsius. This sparked the enormous Qinghai Tibet Plateau afforestation, making it the biggest forestation accomplishment in the world, aiming to stop the expansion of the Gobi Desert. It started in 1970, and it is planned to finish by 2050. This afforestation zone spans across 4,800 kilometers from the northwest to northeast of China across the Sino-Mongolian borders. It is 1,500 kilometers wide, planting a staggering 66 billion trees. Amazing effort, but... The Chinese government decided to plant poplar trees, which can survive long drought periods. Although in 2000, an insect infected those trees, resulting in the death of one billion of them leaving the project 20 years behind. Above all, the speed of the Gobi Desert expansion is greater than the deforestation in some areas. This results that today 85% of the trees originally planted survived in the last 40 years. Scientists say that fewer trees are planted compared to the government's claims. This has to do with corruption and project management failures. 
Nonetheless, the total afforested land is more than the size of France today and has increased China's forested coverage from 10.6% in 1949 to 15%. But China faces another challenge. In order to maintain this percentage, they have to afforest 56,000 square kilometers annually for the next 15 years, assuming that the planting efforts have a survival rate of 100%. A more recent deforestation project started in Africa. It is located in Sahel, a large grassland which is a transitional zone dividing the southern tropical forest from the northern desert. It consists of poor quality soil and it expands every year towards the rainforests of Africa. The Green Wall of Sahara project started 13 years ago. It is 8,000 kilometers long and 15 kilometers wide, passing through 11 countries. Its cost is estimated to be $8 billion, planting 11 million trees to prevent desertification. But how this can be done? This wall protects soil from erosion caused by strong winds, as these trees will decrease wind speeds. In addition, it will fill up previously dry wells, helping croplands to grow. Besides these colossal forestations, there is a huge amount of projects around the world. They may be not as massive as the aforementioned, but they are as much as important. There's a website that I've put the link down in the description, which lists all forestations, either completely or partially man-made. This map shows how the total amount of planted forest changed between 1990 and 2015 in each country. The data are provided by the Global Forest Assessment, which is under the umbrella of the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. The assessment considers a forest to be newly planted if more than half of its trees were established through deliberate seeding or planting from both reforestation and afforestation. I highly recommend to participate on foresting projects either by your physical presence or by donating to this website, which includes all available forestation projects across the world. You can find the link down in the description. No matter how many trees you plant or how much you donate for planting, every tree counts. Thanks for watching. Uh-huh. <laughs>